Now let me tell you the only reason that we have a problem leaning on the Lord, whenever you're in a situation and uh, you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know until sickness strikes your body whether you can really lean on God, until your finances get in trouble where you can really lean on God. And the only reason that we won't fall back blindly is because we don't trust that God is able to uphold us with the right hand of his righteousness. Now here's the problem, because his concept of God is too small. Are you listening? You have a problem trusting what you don't know. And so if this is the size that he knows of God, he doesn't trust that God can handle his situation with his wife and his children. Because his problem is bigger than his concept of his God. So he won't lean on him. But now if he'll continue to feed himself, and if he'll continue to pray, and if he'll continue to allow others to speak testimonies of how the Lord has blessed them, how they trusted in him and God came through, then what happens is that his image of God begins to grow. And now I'm 220 myself. So now his concept of God is bigger than the previous concept of God so now when it's time to say just close your eyes and lean back and you don't know how we insult God when God is just telling us go ahead and let go and we won't let go we keep trying to hold our own weight are you listening? You don't know how insulting that is to God who's strong enough to uphold us with the right hand of his righteousness and he's constantly telling us, let go, let go, but our image of God is too small. But one day when, when our image of God has grown and now God is bigger than our problem and God says, let go, let go, now he can let go and fall back with his eyes shut, trusting that he who has called him is able also to sustain him. Thank you all. And I just came to admonish you today, don't let your concept of God be so small thinking that God can't handle what you are dealing with. He's a big God and his muscles are strong and he's able to secure you to, he's able to break your fall, he's able to catch you. He's the one who's able to keep me from falling and to present me before his, his father, the throne of grace. He's able to do it. And so it happens because your trust in God grows because your concept of God grows. But let me tell you, you got to die to yourself and you have to die to your self-interest in order for the uncertainty of your future to no longer bother you. If the uncertainty of situations in your life keep on bothering you, it means that too much of your flesh is still alive. Because there are times with God, as God said, it's like you've got to go trusting and trembling. When God tells you to do something, when, when God says go, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have some issues with that actual going. Because please understand this, God is never obligated to give us details of the journey as long as he's with us. Never obligated to do that. And I've told you, George MacDonald said that to be trusted is a greater compliment than to be loved. To be trusted is a greater compliment than to be loved. How many people do you know who are in love with people that they cannot trust? It is so easy to be head over heels in love with somebody that you can't trust. And if you can't trust them, your relationship will stay on an emotional roller coaster. I prophesy that to you in Jesus' name. <laughs> but may I just tell you, in the same way that you saw with the illustration, 
God's greatest desire is to be believed, to be trusted, that you will take him at his word. His greatest desire is that you will believe him. That's why without faith, it's impossible to please him. Because there are times that you're going to have to just close your eyes and walk not by faith, but by, by, not by sight, but by your faith. And that's why sometimes that God will just tell you, let go, just let go, let it go. You can't do that by your sight. You do it by your faith. You'll be surprised what an incredible difference that that will make in your life. But his greatest desire is to be trusted. God is never, ever obligated to tell you the details. And you know why? Because he's with you. If the Lord says, get in the car, and you get behind the wheel, I'm getting ready to take you somewhere. He doesn't have to tell you ahead of time where you're going. He'll tell you when you get the turn right. When you come up to the next topic, turn left. He doesn't have to tell you where you're going. Maybe he's trying to surprise you. Maybe he wants to do something to just spoil you rotten. Maybe if he told you uh, ahead of time, you'd get too excited and start acting a fool. <laughs> so he doesn't have to tell you ahead of time if he's going to go on the journey with you. Uh, you, you'll notice something over in Exodus chapter 33 about Moses. Uh, as the Lord told Moses to go and do something, in Exodus chapter 33, in verse 12, then Moses said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people. God says, go on, take the people up. Go on, take them up. Exodus chapter 33, verse 12. He said, but you've not let me know whom you will send with me. He says, yet you've said, I know you by name, and you've also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way. Show me your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. See, God made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The children of Israel only knew his acts. Moses knew his ways. And if you're going to know God's ways, it's because you're going to have to hunger to know God's ways. Moses said, God, show me your ways. Most people said, God, just do it for me. Moses didn't say, God, do it for me. He said, show me your ways. I want to understand your ways. I don't want to just see what you're doing. I want to understand your ways. Most people are frustrated in relationship because you can't understand your partner's ways. Oh, you see the acts, but you don't understand the ways. God made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel, because Moses was daring enough to come in closer. He asked for a closer look and a closer walk with God. And notice what he said in verse 14. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. If, listen, he didn't tell him where he was going. He just said, my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. If God tells you to go someplace, even if he doesn't tell you exactly where you're going, as long as you know God is with you, you ought to have rest. Peace is the greatest sign that you trust him. Rest in your spirit is the greatest sign that you're in trust, that you are walking in trust. So if you want to know whether or not I'm trusting God, can you rest? Can you rest? Because if you cannot rest, you're not in trust. God says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. I'll give you rest. And then notice what he said in verse 15. And then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. He's like, God, we're in a bad place right now, but at least you're with us now. But if you're not going to go with us over yonder, don't even sit. We're not going. If you're not going with us, we are not going. I so cherish the presence of God that I want to be where God's presence is. I don't care if they're offering more money over there. If the Spirit of the Lord is here and has me here, this is where I'm going to be. If you come, Lord, if you are in with me in this house, I don't care how, that the house over there is bigger. I don't care that it's better. I'm going to be where you are. I want to be where you you are because if you ever get the presence of God with you everything will be all right let me just tell you that it doesn't matter where you are it matters who is with you and God is with you wherever you go that's a promise he said I'll never leave you nor forsake you lo I'm with you now even unto the ends of the earth it does not matter where you are it matters who is with you 
Don't you know when God began to prophesy to us in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 2 when he said that when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon you, or neither is the, fly, the fire, the flame going to scorch you because God is with you. You ever notice what he said in Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10? Fear thou not. Why not be afraid? He said, because I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will help you. Yea, I will strengthen you. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. God said, I'm going to be with you. It doesn't matter where you are. You can be like the psalmist David in the 23rd chapter of Psalm and the fourth verse when he said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I can be walking in some scary death defying kind of situation but as long as I'm in that place I will fear no evil why because thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me as long as you're with me and as long as I've got your word God I'm all right is anything too hard for him He's just wondering, can you trust him? Even if he doesn't give you all of the details ahead of time, can you trust him? Can you trust him that as long as he is with you, that it's going to be all right? I know you got some tests to take, but the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the great teacher is going to take the test with you. How can you fail when you've got the answer with you? How can you fail when your doctor is with you? How can you fail the test? It doesn't matter what you're going through and where you are. It matters who's with you. And I just came to remind you today that whenever your trust is on trial, you better realize that he is with you. And his presence, I, I'm like Moses. God, if your presence does not go, I'm not going. I don't want to go wherever you're not if your spirit is not going to meet me there. But God says, trust me. Trust me that I know where I'm taking you. And I'm going to tell you, you need to stop here. You might have to pull over and recuperate. You might have to refill your gas tank. But listen, I'm going to get you there. I, if you trust me, I'll tell you, I know the shortcuts. And I know the scenic routes. And I'm going to take you the way so you get everything that's necessary. Because the journey is just as important as the destination because you begin to learn God and your concept of God grows and I'm just telling you that some of you have been worried about stuff and you've insulted God it is you said to him by your actions when you've refused to go that Lord I'm afraid that you're not able to hold my weight you're not able to support me I, I'm just I'm not comfortable I don't trust that you can support me if I let go and go. And he wants you to be able to trust him. He wants you to trust him. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Until next time, God bless you.